The Bible tells us in John chapter 4. Let not your mind be troubled. You believe in God. In my father's house, many mansions. You were not so. And if I go away, I will come. I paraphrase the words of Jesus that we have used this morning as we, we come together to meet on this place of worship. I want to tell you something. I want to So I should for how I come. I want to reassure that the God who is the resurrection is promised. For those of you who are visiting this church for the very first time, if you need to use the restroom facility, you can reach out to any one of these young men and they can point you to the right place that you need to be. But as we celebrate today the life of Sister Krishna, I know that no one will Sorry, yeah, I'm not speaking. Yeah, they have a lot of the horn outside. Oh, so this time I just invite you to buy your heads as we go through the Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. And though many may say it's a short time, but for others, it's a long time. And so we pray for the And the hope that each believer has that one day Jesus would finally eradicate death. For death is an enemy, and this enemy will never rise a second time. And so again, Lord, may you bless this service, and may someone leave here knowing that death is not the end, for Jesus is still the giver of all life. Bless the proceeding once again of this service, for we ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Good morning. I too extend, I want to extend my condolences to the family. As we go to our congregational hymn, we're going to ask the family to remain seated. The rest of the congregation, you can stand. Please stand as we go to our congregational hymn. It is found in the program. It is well with my soul. Can we all stand? All together singing. When the peace is like a river, attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea, billows roll, whatever my Lord, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. 
my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Second stanza. Though Satan should buffet, though trials shall come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood. Oh, my soul, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, my sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and i bear it no more praise the lord praise the lord oh my soul it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Amen. Amen. I would ask you to kindly remain standing as we go to our scripture reading. Scripture reading found in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1 to 4, would be done by Ania Devo. Ania Devo, Denise. Good morning. Scripture reading is taken from Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 through 4. For everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Here yeah, ends the scripture read. Good morning, family, and good morning, church. You know, we are never prepared for moments like this, but I'm thankful that we serve a God who is able to take us through any situation. And I would like to extend to Brother Norris, or I should say Cousin Norris, and the rest of the family, Condolences on the passing of your loved one. And we pray that God will continue to strengthen you as you go through this, your hour. Coming with condolences at this time will be uh, the member of parliament for the Foxhall area and also the chairman of the Progressive, Progressive Liberal Party, the Honorable Fred Mitchell, 
and he will be followed by Brother Anthony Burnside, who will bless us with special music. They will come in that order. Reverend gentlemen, uh, it's my privilege uh, this morning to join you here at this service for the passing of our beloved friend and sister on this very sad occasion. I want to, first of all, uh, extend condolences uh, to all the members of the family on this passing. And I know it must be doubly painful, the fact that such a young and vibrant woman has passed away. I looked in the congregation and saw many of her co-workers who are here. So that should give the family some sense of comfort of the support and friendship which she had while she was working with them and in our presence. There is a line from Psalm 90, which says, we spend our years as a tale that is told. And even though the psalmist goes on to say that the days of our lives may be three score and 10, and yet with strength, maybe four score. The story of the psalm is, it's not the length of time, but the quality of time that you live. And the story that I've heard of our dear sister was a life of quality. I was reading with uh, great interest the obituary and how she liked to cook and how good she was at preparing foods. I'm sure that that will all be missed. So action, all the members of the family, this is a sad time. But we are a generation of Christians. And the Christian faith says to us, we will see her again. What's left for us is we have to have a life ourselves of quality and goodness and kindness and generosity. So all of us who live in the Fox Hill constituency and the Fox Hill community ought to, on this occasion, both family and friends, rededicate ourselves to all of those themes, goodness, kindness, generosity. And in time, we will build a better and a greater community. I want to thank you for this special honor today. It's my privilege. I'm always happy to be in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I think of all, every time I uh, speak to a Seventh-day Adventist Church, I say how much I admire the leadership of this church and the example that it gives of all of those things that I just spoke about, faithfulness, loyalty, trust, kindness, generosity. As our sister goes to God, let, remember, let us remember those things about her life, commend her to God and say, may she rest in peace. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Times like these are never easy, but we are assured that there is hope beyond the grave. We'd like to say to you, the family, on behalf of the pastoral team, the pastor, Pastor T. Basil Stirrup, the officers and members of the New Providence Seventh-day Adventist Church, that indeed our prayers and thoughts are with you as you go through this, your difficult moment. Be assured 
that as you go through these moments, that the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit is made promised to you. We want you to know that we are with you and that our prayers will continue to be with you. Please know that we love you and that we will continue to show our support to you during this time. God bless you. At this time, just before we continue with our program, just checking to see if of a special item of music, Mr. Anthony Bryant said, is he here? Okay, if not, then we will continue at this time. We invite the following persons to come. As I knew her, five minutes, please, is written there in the program. So we will follow that as has been um, asked for by the members of the family. We have Richard Price, friend. He will be followed by Latoya Raming cousin. They will come in that order as I knew her. Good day, church. There's, there are so many things I could talk about my cousin. She was always one of my favorite childhood cousins. She was my mom's, my mom's sister and her mom were twin sisters. So we were always close. There was a time where we lived together. We did everything together. We cooked, baked. Oh. Dance. She was a great dancer. She just needed to hear a beat and she was right on target. That was one of her favorite hobbies, dancing. Her first child, Alicia. I remembered a few days before she knew she was going to labor. I was planning a year and we were just having a good time ordering pizza and her water bag burst whilst I was planning a year. So one side over here was flat <laughs> and the other was just left. So we had to call the ambulance and I started vomiting. And I said, Christine, I going through the same thing you going through. I said, like, I'm having this baby. <laughs> oh. And Alicia born. she gave Alicia my middle name, Alicia. Alicia was like our child. She was bubbly. <laughs> there are so many memories I could recall. My last birthday, we had my action house. We had a good time dancing and just singing and having a good time. She was always the life of the party. If Christine isn't there, there's no party because she starts the party. May our soul rest in peace.
Is the foyer running here? Richard Price. All right, so we'll have a musical selection that will be brought to us by Mr. Anthony Taylor. Good morning, church. Good morning. To Norris, who I almost grew up with many, many long, long years ago. And to the rest of the family, I extend my deepest sympathy. I know how it is when a love, young, vibrant, young person has gone on to see Jesus. You know, the song said, because he lives, we all will face tomorrow. And if you and you and you live like Christine did, we sure will face tomorrow because he lives. Thank you. 
We want to thank Brother Taylor for that wonderful item that reminds us that whatever we are going through, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. I know you've been sitting for quite some time, for exception of the family, but just before I ask you to stand, I just want to introduce the pastor of this church, who is Pastor T. Basil Sturrup. He also serves as the ministerial secretary for the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. He serves in many capacity. He's a motivator. He's an inspirator. And whatever you want to fill in the blank, he's able to deliver it. But one thing I can say about this preacher today is that he is one who loves God and loves to present the word of God. And if you don't believe me, stop me after the service. But I'm sure that he has a word that God has placed upon his heart. And so at this time, except for the family, I'm just going to ask you just one more time just to stand with me. Because Christ lives, we're going to sing this hymn, hymn number 462, Blessed Assuring, Jesus is mine. Let us sing lustfully as the man of God comes to present the word of God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Here of salvation, purchase of God. Born of in spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Perfect submission, perfect. Visions of rapture are burst on my sight. Rapture now burst on. Angels descending, bring from above. Ding, bring from echoes of mercy, whispers of love. Of mercy, whispers of yes. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, I'm praising my Savior. Perfect submission, all is at rest. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Savior, I'm happy. Watching and waiting, looking above. Waiting, looking Failed with his goodness, lost in his love. His goodness, lost in it. Yes, this is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. song can you praise him today praising my Savior all the day long hallelujah Thank you very much, Pastor Campbell, for your kind words of introduction. Also want to just take a moment at this time to 
express condolences on behalf of my family, to the Ramming family on the passing of your daughter. And as mentioned earlier, please be assured of our prayers and support during this difficult time. For the next few moments, I want to share with you a few words from the scriptures that I hope will boil your spirits up just a little bit. Funeral services have become sad occasions, the age in which we live, but in the early church, a funeral service was considered a celebration. And it was because at that time, many of the believers who fell asleep in Christ, they knew for certain that their calling and election was sure. Not only that, they had a urgency and a perspective that it would not be too long before Jesus would return with power and glory. That great event has not transpired as yet, and as a result, many Christians now at funeral services, they are not so joyful because they see death as a separation that's going to last for a mighty, mighty, mighty long time. And they have no idea when Jesus is coming back again. So there has been less celebration and more sorrow. But I want to encourage all of you today with these words. I don't know when Jesus will return again. But I know for sure that he's coming back. Come on, can I get an amen right there? And that alone ought to give us some cause for joy. And I also want us to be cognizant of the fact that there's some of us in the sanctuary today who just got saved last year. What would have happened if Jesus had come before you made your decision? And so Peter helps us to understand that the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. As some men count slackness. He's faithful. And I believe the only reason why Jesus has not returned as yet is because he's long-suffering. Willing that none should be lost, but that all may come to repentance. So every night when I close my eyes and sleep, when I recognize that this was not the day that Jesus did not return as promised, I recognize that in his foreknowledge, he knows that there's somebody else who wants to make a decision. And in his graciousness and his mercy and his kindness, he waits until everybody would have made their decision. And I want you to know today that he who shall come will come and he will not tarry. And so as I speak to the family today, I do so confessing that I did not know Christine very well, but I know her father Norris most of my life. And in talking with him and his wife, I know for certainty that she was loved by many, as we can see in this sanctuary today. And I know that she will be sadly missed. So allow me to 
just tip my hat to her parents and those who contributed to her life. Because from what I know, she was a beautiful spirit. And we're grateful today because Christine grew up in a Christian home. I don't know if you just got the depth of what I just said, but anybody who grew up in a Christian home has the full knowledge of how important it is to have faith in Jesus Christ. And the good news is those who believe in Jesus, they never die. Oh, I thought I was going to get an amen right there. Well, let me say that again. Jesus said, he who believes in me shall never die. Yes, they may fall asleep for a period of time, but they will not die in the sense that they will not taste of eternal death. Which means that if we fall asleep, in Jesus, we're going to rise again in Jesus. So today I come to this place of worship to celebrate the life of Christine. And I was moved by the expressions of love and all of the kind words that were said. This service was short, but I think it was beautiful. And as I begin this brief discourse today, I call your attention to a passage of scripture found in the book of John, chapter 5, verses 28 and 29, and I read it in your hearing. Jesus says, and he made this statement when someone had passed away, and the family members were distraught. Jesus made this declaration, marvel not at this, meaning death. For the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Not just one or two people, but all who are in the grave shall hear his voice. Jesus says that hour is coming. And he says that they shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So every funeral service you have ever attend in your, attended in your life and every other funeral service that you will attend, all of the funerals that transpired since Adam, Jesus says that an hour is coming when everybody who sleeps in the ground is going to hear his voice. Now here's the clincher. Everybody won't hear it at the same time. There's going to be a first resurrection. Yes, sir. Oh, that's the one I like to talk about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For the Bible says that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise in the first resurrection. Oh, that's the one we want to be in. Because that's the resurrection that leads to eternal life. But Jesus also says that there's a second resurrection. And that one is damnation. I don't, I don't talk about that one because it don't count. So everybody who dies will live again. You will come up either in the first or the second resurrection. I have good news for you. Those who will come up in the first, this is the resurrection of eternal life where you will never sleep in the grave again. You know, I say to my wife all the time, I want to die before you. Yeah, yeah, I want to die before her. Not too early, but before her. <laughs> but I tell her, make sure you're straight because 
if they bury you on top of me and you lost your way on the resurrection morning, I'm going to move your body out of the way. And I like resurrection because death seems to be so cold and so final. When we get that call that a loved one has passed, it, it almost appears as if you want to sing the song, stop the world and let me off. It seems so cold and so final because it comes and it takes our loved ones away. But the God that I serve has a response to deal with death. It's a plan that was crafted before the foundation of the world. It's called the plan of salvation. And the plan is not only on paper, but it's also wrapped up in a person, the man called Jesus Christ. Many people have plans on paper, but do not have the right people to carry it out. But I have news for you today. God's plan is not only on paper. Or you can read it on the paper. It's called the pages of the Bible. But I want you to know that there's also an active agent who was assigned to carry out this plan. His name is Jesus. Does anybody in here today know who I'm talking about? And let me tell you, the plan works. I read the plan. But more than that, I got to know the active agent in the plan personally. I know Jesus Christ for myself. And that's why I can declare to you today that if Christine died in Jesus, everything is going to be okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to weep. But I just want you to know that if you know the Jesus that I know, you must not weep without hope. There is hope beyond the grave. And according to this plan, it's a fail-proof plan because God's in charge of it. The pastor is not in charge of this plan. The arms of flesh will fail you. The deacon is not in charge of this plan. The arms of flesh will fail you. But if God says that everybody who lies in the grave, they will hear the voice of Jesus one day, you can bet your life on it. Because whatever God says will come to pass. This is settling for me. Whenever God is in charge of something, I can rest with assurance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Satan tries to make it look as if he is the one who's deciding who goes and who stays. <laughs> I'm glad to tell you God is the one who decides. He is the giver of life and he's the only one who can take it. Nobody dies without God's permission. When Satan wanted to harm Job, he had to get God's permission just to harm him. So if you got to get God's permission just to do wrong to me, you know you got to get his, his permission in order for me to go. And that's why God is the only one who determines the final destiny of every human being. It's in the hands of an all-loving and an all-wise God. I'm aware that at every funeral service, there are people who come to judge the dead. Yeah, don't stay quiet now. Some of you don't only judge the dead. You in here right now looking at somebody judging the living. Well, let me help you to understand something, my brothers and sisters. None of us are worthy to be judging anybody else. That's the truth. Thank you, sir. 
Only God knows me. Only God really knows you. Only God really knew Christian. And by the way, I am so happy that my final destination is not in your hands and you ought to be happy that yours is not in mine. But our final destination is in the hands, and I don't want you to miss this, of an all-wise, and don't miss this part, an all-loving God. Because there's some people who we don't love that God loves, and we have to understand that his love far outweighs ours. But I don't care who the person is, as God continues to work on our hearts, we ought to be able to look at people through the eyes of Christ. And even if they're messing up right now, don't look at them as they are, but look at them as they can be, because that's the way God sees us. I'm grateful that God is the one who will judge me. And the one who will judge Christine. And so, because she is resting in his hands, yeah. let me share this passage of scripture with you found in 1 Thess Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 and 18. The apostle Paul, understanding the grief and sorrow that death brings, he says, but I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which, which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Why? For the Lord himself, you didn't hear what I said just now. He's not sending an angel to get you. He's not sending a prophet to get you. He loves you so much. He's coming himself. It's like when I got married, I didn't elope with my wife. I allowed her to walk down the aisle and I went halfway to meet her so that everybody can see the one that I chose. I'm saying to you today, brothers and sisters, that's the way God loves us. The resurrection is going to be like a marriage. The church is considered to be his wife and he's not going to elope with his bride. He's coming with power and great glory. Those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together and those that died in Christ I shall rise and meet him in midair. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the clouds, to meet him in the air, and get this part now, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Paul ends the chapter by saying, comfort one another with these words. Your loved ones may rest in the grave, but that's not the end of the story. Jesus is coming riding down with a mighty chariot to awake the sleeping saints. And I want to be there. What about you out there? God has a response to death and he has a response to human suffering. And the day is coming when he's going to fix it all. Let me tell you, he works with governments to do the best that they can to help us. But there's only so much a government can do. He works with the church to do the best that we can to help human society. But there's only so much the church can do. But I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, the day is coming when Jesus is going to take us out of this sinful world and fix this finally once and for all. And we will occupy the earth made new. The only government that can stop crime is God's government. We ought to pray and support those who have the opportunity to lead us down. But all the answers we're looking for, we will not receive them until we live in the new earth. What we ought to be doing right now is working together to make the best out of the mess that we're in.
God is going to fix it. And when that resurrection takes place, I have sad news for St. Ambrose and Restview and Bethel Brothers and Butler's Funeral Home and the rest of them. The day is coming when Jesus is going to put all of you out of business. Sorry, sis. Sorry, but We're grateful for your services, but your services are temporary. One day, God is going to shut every funeral home down. Oh, I say amen to that. Preach, sir. Doing my best, Lord. This won't help me. And get this, God loves us so much that in the meantime, while we share tears and we have sorrow, he shares our grief. Oh, yes, he does. In fact, he identifies with every emotion we have ever experienced. God identifies with everything we identify with joy, happiness, pain hunger, suffering, loss, even death. And Jesus refers to himself in the book of Revelation as the first begotten of the dead. Oh yes, brothers and sisters, we have a high priest who knows what we go through. God is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He watched his own son die on a cross, go into a grave. But thank the Lord, that's never the end of the story when you're dealing with God's plan. On the third day, he got up again. Can somebody give God some praise in this house of worship today? Jesus came down here to save us. And in order to do that, he had to take away the sting of death. He had to conquer that bad boy. He had to chain him up and put him in check. And when he got up on the third day, he looked death in the face and he said, Oh, grave, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Jesus had every experience you and I will ever have. But this last experience is the one that I find to be so amazing. He even identifies himself with dead people. Listen to me. There is nothing that you have been through. There's nothing that you are going through. In fact, there's nothing you will ever go through that Jesus hasn't already been through, including death. Jesus doesn't pretend that he knows what it feels like to be hungry. He's been hungry. He doesn't pretend to know what it feels like when you are experiencing pain. He experienced pain that you can't handle. And if that's not enough, he said, I'm going to try this grave thing too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Jesus said, I know what happens to the body when a person dies. Uh -huh. And he didn't read about it in a book and he didn't watch it on a documentary. He knows it because he experienced it. Jesus experienced how a mortis when he gave up the ghost on Calvary, his body turned pale. He experienced Alga mortis. He experienced the warmth leaving the body and the body turning cold. He experienced liver mortis. When they took him down from the cross, the blood in his body moved down to the lowest point. And this is due to the force of gravity. And the blood left discoloration wherever it settled. He experienced rigor mortis. Shortly after he got down from the cross a few hours later, his body turned stiff and left him in a permanent position where he could not even move his arms. Uh -huh. 
And three days later, he got up to let us know that it wasn't so bad. He got up and declared that I was spiritually in awe and I came through it. I figured out death. He says, I am he that lived and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I've got the keys of death in my hand. There's nothing you've gone through, will go through, that Jesus has not gone through. And he came through it victoriously. That's why I can trust somebody who's gone through it before me. Because if he can go through it and come through victorious, surely he can show me how to do the same thing. What do you say amen to that? A few folk put him in the grave. Well, I'll tell you something, nobody had to take him out. He declared before he died, he said, hey, I lay down my life. The nails on the cross couldn't kill him. A spirit inside couldn't kill him. When he took upon us, our, when, he went, when he took upon himself our sin, he had to die the death that we deserved. The nails didn't kill him. He voluntarily gave up his life. But he's the only one who can declare that I'll take it up again. And on the third morning, he made good on his promise. Would you say amen to that? Amen, amen. And he didn't come up empty handed. He came up with keys. Oh, what a savior. Of mercy. He's such a savior that Moses called him a rock. David called him a shepherd. There's a list of names throughout scriptures. All of them sound good. The day star, the lily of the valley, my rose of Sharon. But on this occasion, Jesus says, call me what you want. But I want to record for you that I am Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and I'm the end, saith the Lord. I'm the one which is and was and is to come. I'm the Almighty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We read earlier, Jesus says, whenever you come to the funeral, marvel not at this. For the hour is coming in the which all, everybody say all, all, all who are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Thank you, Jesus. And those that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Christine is resting. Her destiny is already sealed. We can't change a thing for her today. In fact, this sermon is not for her. This sermon is for us who are alive and remain. Can I get an amen? And the question to each of us today is, what resurrection will you come up in? Yes, sir. The first or the second. As I said earlier, only the first one counts. If you get up in the second resurrection, it's too late. So the apostle Paul admonishes us. He pleads with us. He prays with us. He says, while time remains, make your calling and election sure. I've got good news for everybody here today. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, it's not too late. You can do it before you leave this building. Mm -hmm. Sure. And here's the good part. He has already gone to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. He's building something you yes, might as well go and occupy it. How many of you, if a multi-millionaire was to say to you, I'm going to life with key, and I'm going to build a place for you, and I'm coming back to get you, and he comes back and get you, how many of you will say, I don't want to go and live in a mansion in life with key? And eyes have not seen, brothers and sisters. Ears have not heard. It has not even entered the imagination or our hearts the things that God has prepared for us. I've been to London several times. 
And the closest I got to the palace was in front of the gate. But a couple of years ago, I went in the summertime. And in the summertime, they do tours of the palace. And for the first time, I walked through. And I was shocked because I thought the palace was that section where you see from the gate. That's mainly like the facade the palace is behind that. And when you enter the palace, the first thing you see to the left is a grand staircase that takes you up to the second floor. As we began the tour, we went into this area where they have these amazing um, um, meals where the queen would, would, would um, she would host her guests and, and they would have these feasts and, 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 and wonderful occasions. And then we walked down the halls and I started looking up at the 20 feet ceilings and, 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 and the crown rolling that's gold leaf. I've seen uh, portraits that were painted that are bigger than life size portraits. And when we walked into the throne room and I looked ahead and I saw two chairs up there and the magnificent room that I was in, and I started to say, wow, and it, it was as if God tapped me on my shoulder and he said, hey, 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 you're still in the ghetto. <laughs> Everything on this earth is equivalent to living in the ghetto compared to what God has gone to prepare for us. And if I could get excited and happy about going into a palace where Queen Elizabeth and her ears live, I can tell you that I am two, three, four, five, ten times more excited to see what God has in store for me. So, brothers and sisters, the day is coming. And I don't know about you, I'm just going to be waiting. If I'm dead, I've already been practicing my resurrection moves. I'm coming up, doing some stuff. I wish I could show you that move, but I can't do it in church because some of those moves get seen too old. You know what I'm talking about. God's been good to me. Has he been good to you? When the resurrection trumpet sounds, if you're dead, you can't just get up like you're still dead. You got to you gotta do some moves. Can I get an amen like that? And if I am alive, I have my translation move. And on the way to glory, I'm going to say to the Lord, just stop by the moon for just two seconds. Mm -hmm. See, Michael Jackson did the moonwalk on earth, but I want to do the moonwalk on the moon. Let me tell you, this is going to be an amazing time with God. Do you want to be with him when he comes back? Come on, open your mouth and the redeem of the Lord say so. Do you want to be ready when Jesus comes? Brothers and sisters, he loves you. He died for you, and he's coming back for you. The least you could do is give him your heart so that when the trumpet sounds, we shall rise never to part again. You know, every preacher, you know, you don't be popular, you're not preaching everybody in heaven. But I, I don't preach anybody into heaven, I don't preach anybody into hell. I just let the congregation know that the destiny of the deceased is in the hands of an all wise and an all loving God. And I say to you, if Christine died in Jesus, and when I die, if I die in Jesus, and when you die, if you die in Jesus. You can die knowing that that's not the end of the story. Let's give God some praise in this place today. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. He's worthy of our praise. He deserves our praise. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the King. Amen. If you receive the word of the Lord today, would you just say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. If you receive the word of the Lord today, would you say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God for his speaking to us today. We're going to have a prayer now for the family. And we invite the family, if you would, just to stand as long as well as those who are here supporting you. We invite you to stand right now. So we offer a word of prayer for the family members. <laughs>
Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this powerful reminder, Lord, that there is hope beyond this whole sinful world. Thank you for using a man's servant today to remind us, O oh God, that we have hope, hope in the coming of the Lord Jesus. We ask now that you remember the family of God that have come to uh, pay their respects, O oh Lord, to their loved ones. We pray we that pray you would draw the mighty to them. them. We pray, we pray oh God, God, that you would keep them in the hollow of your hands. We pray, oh God, that in moments when the phone calls will stop, in the moments when they are all alone, that your Holy Spirit will be close to them. We pray, oh God, that you will give them strength on the inner man, that they may know, oh God, that they can trust in an all-knowing and all-powerful God. We thank you, oh God, for giving them the reminder, Lord, that as they prove faithful to you, that one day, O oh Lord, that you will meet them, you will come to get them, you will come to save us all. You will come to take us home to live with you. So, Father, we thank you for the awesome reminder that the plan of salvation, O oh God, was completed, that the plan of salvation in you coming here to this earth, identifying yourself with us, hanging on a cruel cross, and coming to life on the third day, Father, we have the reassurance of the resurrection of the life, that you have the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Thank you for this reminder, O God, that death will die, that one day death will die. Thank you, Jesus, that you will destroy them with this promise, O God, yet committing the family into your care. Keep them even now in the hollow hands, and may they be reassured in knowing that you love them with an everlasting love. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The funeral service will continue at the cemetery on Spagnard and Carbon Road. And in preparation for that continuation, we invite you all to stand once again as we have the recession of in the Spinex at the program. After the singing of the first verse, the platform will uh, begin the recession and will be followed by the family members by all of Rose, and then we all will continue in like manner. It is finished. There's a line. Oh. 
finish and the heat is his lord the earth shakes the earth shakes with the force of the conflict and the sun refuses or the hanks god's son in the balance for the hanks God's son in the balance and through the dark. Well, yes, it is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There'll be no more war. The end of the conflict It is finished And the Jesus is Lord Yes, it is finished The battle is over It is finished There'll be no more war And Jesus is Lord. Yes, it is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There'll be no more war. It is finished. The end of the conflict. It is finished. And Jesus is.